Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at Blue PKN Computer Training, and in this video, we're in Microsoft Excel, and we want to be able to look up all occurrences of a value. So normally, if you're using something like VLOOKUP, you're looking up a value, say, TML1 in this list of servers here. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the first occurrence of that value in the list, and it will ignore all the others. Well, we want to return all occurrences of a particular value or a particular record within our list. So our scenario is we've got a list of downtime occurrences. We've got the server name, the date, and the actual length of the downtime. I want to be able to select something in this list and it will return all downtimes, dates, and downtime periods for the server that I choose in this drop-down list. If I add another server at the bottom here, TML8, I put in today's date, and I put in the time, so it was 30 seconds. What I'm expecting is that TML8 will appear here, whereas it didn't before, and it will also return at that time. So let's see how this is done. First thing is to convert our data source into an Excel table. So click in any cell, control T on your keyboard. This little dialog box here, make sure my table has headers as ticked if you do already have headings. The reason we're doing that is it creates a dynamic range. So if I do add more records at the bottom here, this table up here will reflect those changes. It's gonna change the look of it. So I'll go up to table design here and I'm gonna go for this, this look here to kind of match my look over here. The next thing to do is to create this little drop down list. It needs to show all the servers that are available here. I'm going to create a list of unique server names over here, and we can hide this column in a minute. And to do this, we're going to use the unique function. Now, if you don't see the unique function, then unfortunately, all the functionality that I'm going to show you here does rely on you having a really recent version of Excel. So if you're not seeing unique, apologies about that, but it isn't quite gonna work for you. So I'm choosing unique, and the first argument there is array, so I'll just select the server names, close the bracket, press enter, and then I want to sort them. So I put unique within sort. Is it there? And then I'll get a nice sorted list. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some data validation up here. So I click into that cell, go up to data, data validation. I'm allowing a list. And the source is basically this cell, and then you say hash. Because this list may eventually grow if I add more items down here. And the hash means basically go far as down as there are consecutive cells within this list. So I click on OK, and now I have this nice drop-down list of values here. Just to prove the point, if I was to add TML4 to this, it would show it there. I need to have a space so it gets it sorted properly. TML4 appears within the list in the correct order because it is dynamic. Let's put some dates in here. Get today's date again. Let's put in time. Let's say we had one minute 45 there. Okay. So how do I get whatever I choose here to display the correct server information in this table? Well, we're going to use a function called filter for this. Again, if you don't see it in the list, I do apologize. Uh, you need a more recent version of Excel. Now, the array is the array or range of cells that you want to display in this table, basically the values you want to return. And that's going to be the date and the downtime, comma. Then the second argument is include. So what do we want to include? Well. From this column here, we want to only include the server names 
that correspond with whatever's been selected in this cell. So basically the server column has to equal whatever is here. So I close the bracket, press enter, and you can see it returns the correct dates and downtimes for server one, terminal one. If I choose two, there's only one occurrence of terminal two in this list and it's returned the correct data. I do need to show this in time format that would help. So if I select all of these values here, and I show it in time, that's a little bit better. It would be nice if the dates were in ascending order. Well, we can do that. If I go back to here, what I can do is I can use the sort function again. And my array is returned by the filter function, but I can use the second argument, sort index. Basically, I can put in a numeric value there to say that I want to sort by the first column. Close the bracket, and there you have it. The, the dates are in ascending order. Let's add a downtime. And so we've got terminal seven. I'm going to add another terminal seven. So we'll say TML seven. And we'll say today's date. And we'll say it was down for one hour. And you'll see that it appears there at the top there. The other dates are a little bit later. If I put in a later date, let's say TML7, I'll say the 1st of the 11th, 2020. It was down for a very short amount of time, 10 seconds. And that would appear at the bottom of the list. You could eventually hide this. So that's just for the internal workings of this drop down list. Okay, so there we are. Without having to use any complicated VLOOKUP formulas, we've been able to return all occurrences of a particular value within another table. Okay, that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you have.